welcome to Watch and Think. Watch and Think, what we are going to be talking about. The show that we are going to be doing today is going to be a very serious and horrible topic. So watch and think. My, I would like to uh, inform you that today I have wonderful, wonderful guests, and I'd like to introduce them right off the bat. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you Irene Armendariz Jackson. Welcome, Irene, to Thank our you, show. Mary Irene is a uh, uh, co-founder of the founder and president of Border Security of Coalition. Border Security <laughs> Coalition, and she also is the former uh, candidate for U.S. House District 16, which is here in El Paso. Which is here in El Paso, Texas, and then of course she's also a real real estate agent. And my second. A wonderful guest is Minister Diana Washington Valdez. Welcome, Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. you so much for being here with us. Again, this is a very severe topic that we're going mm -hmm. to be talking about. And Diana also is um, the president and publisher of uh, the Freelance Link, right? Uh, no, not anymore. I'm the um, founder of the uh, ministry, Faith Today Christian Ministries. Faith Today Christian Ministries. Well, thank you so much for coming to, to uh, watch and think. And the topic and the name of our show is called Bethmeth, the Transgender Demon. And I would like to start with prayer. And I would like to ask Diana, Minister Diana, if she would uh, read a couple of scriptures. And then I would also like to have Irene um, pray for us. Sure. Go ahead, Diana. All right, to set the stage uh, for today's discussion, Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 through 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Matthew 19, 4. He answered, this is Jesus speaking, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Mark 10, 6. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 1 through, well, no one whose testicles are crushed or whose male organs or whose male organ is cut off shall enter the assembly of the Lord. Amen. Irene, would you please lead us in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking yes, you that you are so Jesus. good to us. And go, Lord, you have given us your manuscript, your, your guide, Lord, for a good living while we are in this earth and while we have the life that you have given us. Help us to follow it. Help us to protect it. Protect our eyes, our minds, our ears, Lord. And Lord, I ask for everybody that is watching this show that their hearts may be open to your truth, not what Mary Yoli, Diane, or Irene say, but what your scripture says. And to not be deceived, just like yes, Eve was Jesus. deceived in the Garden of Eden, let us not be deceived by society in this very tumultuous time, Lord, where we see a lot of aggression towards righteousness, which is aggression towards you. Let our mouth speak words of healing, of comfort, and of truth. In Jesus' name we ask. In Amen. Jesus' name we ask. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your precious blood. Again, the title or the theme of this show, Watch and Think, Bashemoth, the Transgender Demon. Well, what is Bashemoth, the Transgender Demon? Well, let's start out with... Um, Bashemoth does not appear in the Bible. However, the spirit of Bashemoth, who is also Satan, has been linked with homosexual, transgender, and anti-gender roles. According to dozens of historical writings, the Bashemoth worship is based on the destruction of the nuclear family and the rendering of the biblical roles of men and women as obsolete, obsolete. The worship of Bethlehem evidently goes back to the Knight Templars around the year 1307. So 
these evidently, the Knights Templars, were evidently the ancestors of the modern Freemasonry. Uh, their practice, back with the Knights Templars and also the Freemasons, from what I understand as of now, is to engage in sexual orgies which revolve around the sodomy homosexual lifestyle. The main mission is to eliminate gender roles. Keep that in mind. Watch and think. Eliminate males and females. So then what are we going to end up with? They consider male and female roles to be discarded, and they applaud homosexual and lesbian transgender lifestyle. So where do we get Bethmas, the picture of Bethma, who is Bethma? In 1810, a former Catholic priest named Adolphus Louis Constant, who later became an occultist, and changed his name to Eliphaz Levi. He wanted to become a so-called Jew. He decided to draw a picture of Bethma. So this illustration of Bethma was on the scene. Levi based the illustration of Bethmas on a gargoyle. On gargoyles are ugly looking things. The head is that of a goat, and, go and Satan is known as the goat, with a five pointed stars or a pentagon right in the middle of the forehead, and two huge wings. Worst thing, it's half animal and half human. It gets worse. The Bethmas image combines both male and female qualities. One arm is masculine, one arm is feminine. It has breasts like a woman and has both male and female organs. In addition, one arm pointing skyward towards a white crescent moon and the other moon pointing downwards towards a black crescent moon. Now all of these, everything that I have said, it would take me two shows to, to give you information about what it indicates, what is the hidden meaning about all of these things. On the right arm is, word, is the word salve, salve, uh, which is a Latin word for solve, and uh, solution. And on the left arm is the word caugula, caugulation, and that in itself, salve, caugulation, if you go into the deeper meaning of it, it means to more or less just dissolve and remake and start afresh. In order to advance the agenda, these homosexual lesbians and pedophiles created the Satanic Ten Commandments to promote homosexuality in society as something good and not evil. Imagine, good and not evil. The Satanic Temple adopted the statue of Bethma as their logo. So Bethma becomes more and more... Um, it, uh, they, they want to make sure that people start to understand it and not feel uh, fearful about it. Now, in January 6, 2014, this is January the 6, 2014, Lucius Grievous, a spokesman for the Satanic Temple, informed the whole world that uh, a statue of Bethlehem with a little boy and a little girl standing in front of it was going to be exhibited, and it was going to go on a U.S. tour. So here we have the statue of Bethlehem with a little boy and a little girl being displayed throughout the U.S. So the statue, of course, is of Satan in the form of Bethlehem, and it offers. And they also say that he also has plenty of laptops. So they have this statue with Bethlehem with plenty of laptop for these little children to sit on, on uh, Satan, the throne of Satan. And they compare this to Bethlehem, uh, just like uh, children sitting on Satan's, uh, Santa Claus's laps. Of course, now I have my theory about Santa Claus, but that's a different subject for a different show, and uh, which I don't think they should sit on Santa Claus's lap either. Again, I deviate. At least three states that we know of were visited by the statue. Of course, one of them was Salem, Massachusetts, so no, no big deal there. The shocking was Little Rock, Arkansas, when they challenged the Ten Commandments. And, of course, Detroit, Michigan, and more to follow. Now, naturally, naturally, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, slash, 
questioning mm, what is my gender identity, intersex and asexual came into the picture and they started the LGBTQIA. They decided, wait a minute, we also need to, uh, since we have Beshemoth, our God, our statue, the one we love, uh, we need to do away with pronouns. So the rainbow community also criticized the use of sex, gender pronouns, and thus we have now today that they want, they don't want us to use pronouns. No more he, no more she, until we decide what gender we're going to be. Well, however, the demons, as I've said before, never referred to themselves as he or she. They always refer to themselves as it, never uh, we and us, but never he or she. So now, let me ask my guests, Irene and um, Diana, what do you think about Beshemoth? Well, it goes against the first commandment, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. And uh, the reality is, is that the, the Christians in the United States in, in, our, in our Jerusalem, which is El Paso, are asleep. They're happy going to church All and over the not States. knowing. Well, but this is our Jerusalem. This is where we start. This is where this show airs. In El Paso, and we Texas. should be brokenhearted yes. for what is happening in our own society. Yes. And so if we have a lot of uh, pew warmers that don't know the scriptures, and we have a lot of pastors that are not, that are not focusing on what's happening right now. Yes. They'll tell, because they've told me, oh, we preach against sin. Yes, but people are hungry. The pews, the surveys say that they want to hear specific topics. And what does the scripture say about them? So we ask our kids to be uh, brave for the Lord. They even have the take your Bible to school. How many adults take their Bibles to, to work? I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the people that go on Sunday, even the deacons and Whoever, the hierarchy of the churches, they're not taking their Bibles to church, but we want the kids to be brave for the Lord. So again, it goes back to the Ten Commandments that we as Christians is, are supposed to be following. And the number one says, thou shall not have any other gods before me. And it's plain. If you know scripture, it's plain. If you didn't know this before, you know now because Mary Yoli has explained what this statue means. So you can't be ignorant. What about you, Diana? What do you think? Well, I think it is important, as you pointed out, as both of you have pointed out, that there are demonic forces behind these uh, changes we're seeing in the society, in these movements, these uh, societal movements. Uh, and that is very important to understand because a lot of people are in bondage uh, to these things, to these lifestyles. They don't know, and they don't know how to be set free apart from understanding that. Now, uh, another name for one of the gender fluid deities that has been worshipped, uh, we're talking centuries, centuries, over the centuries. This is nothing new necessarily, no. but it's new for uh, a society that is largely considered itself Christian. All right, is uh, Anani, Anani is a gender fluid deity That's that right. pops up the here Anani. and there. And it, I think it's also under, important to understand that some things that Jesus pointed out, for example, in Matthew 19, 12, where he says, he was speaking about marriage and divorce. And then when the disciples said to him, if this is a situation between a husband and wife, is it better not to marry? Uh, and Jesus replied, not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. For some are eunuchs because they were born that way. And we know that there are uh, people who are born from birth with um, genital malformations and so on and so forth, or with the um, uh, genders of two, of, of, you know, of both male and female. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an anomaly, a genetic anomaly. They were born Not that way. It's norm. very rare. Not the norm. Others were made that way by men. Uh, we know about the eunuchs that served in temples of uh, the empires where they were castrated in order to uh, serve the... Uh, uh, the concubines and, you know, uh, that belong to the, the kings and princes. And others have renounced marriage voluntarily, not like the Catholic Church that forces its priests to uh, live a lifestyle of abstinence because the ideal was for people to get married. Uh, the Lord created men and women to marry. Uh, but some of them set themselves aside for service to the Lord, but it's voluntary. It's not, 
you know, they don't change their genders or anything like that. Uh, and so I think the best, the most important thing we need to know is that these are demonic forces yes. that appear from time to time in societies where they are allowed to come in. And I yeah, think man. this is all yeah. headed toward transhumanism. It's setting the stage for us to uh, transit to a transhumanist society where there are no genders. It's, uh, n there's no human beings either. It's a man and a machine. Uh, gender is neutral. And this is the destruction of God's creation. And, and the yes. Antichrist, the Antichrist, it culminates with the Antichrist. Yes. Like Antichrist, according to scripture, is homosexual. Yeah, a sodomite. What about the demons that are not called he and she? What do you say about that? Irene? Well, it goes back to what uh, Diana was saying. You know, where are we headed? First of all, where do we come from? If you, if you are a, a, a student of the scriptures, um, if you have an inkling to read the scriptures, one of the things that I found when I started devoting my time to reading the scriptures and understanding is that human beings are the same from the foundation of the earth from the first fall. We tend, we want to move in the direction of uh, a very narrow mind of us, the whole world revolves around us. But when you start understanding with the pronouns, especially how demonic um, it, it all is, then you need to definitely not only yourself shy away from it, but definitely tell your children, tell your grandchildren, this is not accepted. If you go on any social media, a lot of the young people think it's cool to put on their pronouns. We as parents, and I'm talking about me, I have a 16-year-old at home. We need to be checking their social media and make sure that they do not follow demons into corruption. Yes. And so social media is very big on kids' lives and even on a, in adults' lives. And, you know, like I told my husband, I like social media because if we didn't have social media, we wouldn't have the opportunity to actually say our side of the story and defend the gospel because... The media has re completely canceled truth, and truth comes directly from the Word of God. Amen. The pronouns have tr come in, have snuck in. They have snuck in, and did you know that at our own hospital here, our own county hospital, a nurse was telling us that in labor and delivery, they have to go ask the parent, "What pronoun do you want me to put on your child's birth certificate?" So, for those of you that think that this could not happen in El Paso, it's already here. But what are we going to do to stop it? Not only in El Paso, the whole United States. Have you had any encounters with um, pronouns and people insisting that they're not male or female? What, what I don't understand is people saying they stand and look me in the face and they say to me, I don't know whether I'm a female or a, or a male. I am looking at them and I'm saying to myself, what an idiot. <laughs> That's all I can say. What an idiot. What do you mean? Well, I think it starts from a broken relationship with mm -hmm. God, uh, God our Father. And so if we don't have an identity that ties us to mm. God the Father, the Creator, mm -hmm. then everything else starts to fall apart because that is the foundation for humanity Absolutely. is our Creator. Yes, that's a slap in the face to God, that God decided when you were born, as the scripture said, God in Genesis, right? Mm -hmm. He, God is the one that decided. Male or female. Male or female. Would you read that again sure. for the Genesis? Let's be clear on this. This is not a political issue. This is an issue that it will destroy your faith, your life. This is a very critical issue. You are talking uh, an issue that you're telling God. God, you made a mistake. I was not supposed to be a female. Excuse me? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And, of course, Jesus repeats the same thing in Matthew in the Gospel. Have you not read in Genesis that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? It is such a simple, I mean, there's nothing scientific about this. God decided you were going to be a female and that you were going to be a male. Now, so why is Satan so against God's decision that you were born a man 
or that you were born a woman. And nowadays, I'm finding some men are, I mean, with muscles, and I mean, they look like a man, and they're being, uh, what is the word, uh, identified, they're feminine. It's crazy. It's, it's so satanic. It's evil. Well, Mary Yoli, it goes back to what is the purpose of men and women? What is the purpose of the genders? It's to be fruitful and multiply. And multiply. Why? Because our job as believers, as children, as chosen for, we are chosen to glorify God and to multiply for more people to glorify God. So again, it, where does it go back to? It goes back to destroying humanity, what yes. uh, Diane was talking. Why? Because our job is to glorify God. Yes. And so it goes back to attacking the purpose for which we were created. Two men mm -hmm. cannot glorify God, uh, uh, produce another man, uh, human being by glorify, to glorify God. And two women cannot um, have a, a child with uh, it, to glorify God. So again, it goes back to the purpose to for which we were created, and that is to be fruitful and multiply. And this kind of speech, what we say unscripturally, not what Irene says, not what Diane says, not what Mary Yoli says, what does the scripture say? It is being deemed hate speech. Yes. Just the other day, the our newspaper, the El Paso Times, talked about uh, or brought out the, the representative here in El Paso, and she wants to pass a bill uh, to be able to forbid those that have been convicted of a hate crime to not be able to own a gun. So is it really because she's concerned no. about safety? No, it's again going back to attacking what we were created for. We were created to glorify God and to be fruitful and multiply. That's really the first command that God gives man. Be fruitful and multiply. Two men cannot be fruitful and multiply, and two women cannot be fruitful and multiply. And so when you hear all these really sweet um, things that are coming into your ears or you're reading with your eyes, be aware and do not be deceived. Amen. Which reminds me of uh, the original purpose of uh, what they're pushing nowadays, which started a long time ago, which uh, is called the Agenda 2030. If you're not familiar with Agenda 2030, the, the uh, depopulation of the world, uh, if you're not familiar with the Georgia Guidestones, which were finally destroyed, the Ten Commandments of Satan, the Georgia Guidestones, which also speaks about... Uh, so we don't have any genders, no male, no females. Consequently, we don't produce. And their bottom line with uh, of this particular people that uh, made up Agenda 2030, the population of the world, well, naturally their agenda is going to be fruitful because how can you have more children? How can you multiply if you're already telling people, uh, you know, no man, no female, so that means we cannot... I have reproduce. Reproduce ourselves. And why is it, you, mm -hmm. you asked a question, why is it so popular? It's popular because we're sinful people and because we are, we have to fight against our flesh. Work out your salvation daily, Paul says. Yes. Why? Because we're fighting against our own flesh. Does it feel good to eat a lot? The, the end product is you're going to be heavy, you're going to have all these diseases, but at the moment you know, you're putting all that food in your mouth, it tastes good. Yes. It tastes good. So there's not just the sin of sexual sin, but the sexual sin is, is so offensive to the Lord because it's against the body. And what yes. is our body supposed to do? Be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, so here's this statue, the statue of Bethlehem, being paraded around across the world and across the United States. They've included little children. I mean, they're brazen. They're in your face, having the little boy and a little girl looking up adoringly to this horrible, monstrous goat figure that, you know, and, and they're supposed, I mean... And they're man-created. These they're figures man are man-created. I want to mention that uh, this rebellion against God has resulted in the fact, that this is a fact, research has borne this out, that the world population has reached a peak. And in many places, the United States, in Europe, and even in China, the population is going to decline, decline. There are very concerns all over, all over the world about this. So even without uh, a, an intentional depopulation campaign against humanity, 
this rebellion has brought us to where we are today. There's not going to be enough young people being born in the future. Uh, if we had just done what the Lord asked us to do and lift his lifestyle, uh, we wouldn't be facing some of these issues. They're very big. They're very big uh, policy and government issues. They are. It's just Well, we bought into a society that tells us have two kids and be happy. That's not what the word says. It no. says be fruitful and, and multiply. multiply. And I fed into that that society, society stigma. And we go to churches and say, how many children do they have? If you have more than two, all of a sudden the church is putting in their two cents. Oh, are you having any more? I, I hope you're done. Why? That goes against God's scripture. See how subtle it is? Very subtle. Enough. Children are a blessing. And blessed is that whose quiver is full. That's what the scripture says. Yes. And this Besham Ups statue. So what would you do if you found out that they're going to er bring in the statue of Bethlehem and say, uh, yes, yes, we're here at KSE TV Christian Television Station in El Paso, Texas. What would you do? How would you react? If they're coming to if El Paso? If they said, we're going to bring a statue here to El Paso. We need to stand up and fight against this, everybody. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of things sure. already happening. There's a lot of things happening. And being involved on that side of, of society, which is what we call the political yes. side, there's, there's more acceptance in the world than there is in the church. Yes. And until the church, and I've said this in all the, church, in all the other shows, until the church has or steps up to their rightful uh, role in society, which is to be the head and not the tail. Yes. We will continue to see this. Why are our taxes so high? Because yes. the church has not been active in speaking against the bondage yes. that we are under in El Paso. Amen. So what would I do? First of all, bring awareness. Go to the pastors and say we need to organize against it. Amen. Well, I want to thank you both, Irene and Diana. I want to thank you so much for being a part of this very serious show. Absolutely. Thank you again. God bless you. Thank you, Mary Ellie. And I'm going to encourage pleasure. the viewers to watch and think and keep your eyes open. It is a horrible thing for us not to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you again. Watch and think. Goodbye. Right.